Hi guys, PoE is known as the power over Ethernet. It allows electrical power transmitted over cable along with the data signal. Using PoE is reliable and it can provide continuous power. Most importantly, you can deploy devices without access to a power outlet. However, not all the devices can take power from a UTP cable. So what can we do if we want to use a non-PoE device but power it with PoE? The most effective way and easy way is to use a PoE splitter. A PoE splitter allows you to power a variety of non-PoE devices and make it faster install. The installation is straightforward. You just simply plug in the PoE splitter and connect with the non-PoE device using an Ethernet cable. Now, today in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a PoE splitter to connect with a non-PoE device. But before we jump to the video, please make sure you hit the like button because it really helps with our YouTube algorithm and make my life a whole lot easier. So exactly how does a PoE splitter work? PoE splitter connect to Ethernet cable carrying the power and data signal. It will separate the power and the data. It sends data directly to the non-PoE device and send power to a separate cable or connector that connect to the power input of the device. And the PoE splitter also complete the power handshaking with the PoE injector or the PoE switch. If you plug in the UTP cable directly from the switch to the non-PoE device, nothing will happen because the edge device will not send back the correct signal to the switch or the injector. A PoE injector or a switch will first verify and classify the edge device before it senses power. So PoE splitter will send back the correct signal so the switch or the injector will send power over to the edge device and this is how it works. Now, PoE splitter will also step down the voltage of the power signal to a level that is compatible with the non-PoE device. Without saying, let's move on to the demonstration board and do the connection together. So here we are in front of the demonstration board and I'm going to connect a non-PoE camera to our PoE switch. Let's do everything from the beginning. Over this side, we have the NVR, the router, and the PoE switch. The router is already connected to our NVR and everything is powered up. Now, let's connect our PoE switch by using the short patch code with our main network, the router. And this is the Ethernet cable that we are using to connect our switch with the Edge device. Let's plug it in here. And come all the way to the Edge. Now this is the PoE splitter that we are about to use, where this is the PoE in port and we have the out port. Remember, we have to separate into power port and data port. Now let's do the connection. Let's connect with our Ethernet cable from the PoE switch. Now let's use a power cord to connect with the power port to our camera. Second, we are going to use a short patch cord to connect the data port with the camera. We can see that indicated light is on, so our non-PoE camera is already getting power from the PoE switch and the teleport is also separated. Now, let's move over here and see the image is getting ready. All right, and this is a live video. Let's see. And we can see our coworker here working really hard. So here are some tips about how to choose your PoE splitter. Today I used the DC 12 volt PoE splitter and it depends on your device power input. This is a DC 5 volt PoE splitter which 
which look exactly the same as the 12 volt. The only difference is the output voltage. Now you also need to consider the power budget when choosing the PoE splitter. PoE has different standards like the IEEE 803.2, AF, AT, and BT. Each type of the standard supply different output. So if you're using the high power non-PoE device like this big guy, the PTZ camera, then you will need a higher power PoE splitter, which is this one. The 60 watt PoE splitter, it can supply up to 60 watts of power. And when you use this, make sure you change your PoE switch also. This is a PoE plus switch, we can supply 30 watts of power. You need to change it to a PoE plus plus switch, which can supply up to 90 watts of power. You must match the switch with the splitter because they have to do the power handshaking. The switch will have to send signal to verify the edge device which through the PoE splitter and the splitter will have to send back the correct signal in order for the switch to send power. Furthermore, the 60 watts PoE splitter is IP67 waterproof. So if your device is in, in store, outdoor, it will be the perfect choice. The PoE, the 60 watts PoE splitter, the temperature working range is from minus 40 degrees up to 75 degrees. And you can even bury it underground since it's waterproof. Now, we all know that PoE is limited to 328 feet. Now, if distance is your problem, then you can watch another video on how to use PoE to install a non-PoE device beyond 328 feet. Now, thank you for watching today. I'll see you next time.